As coronavirus cases start to go down and more shots get to more people, we can finally feel just a little bit more hopeful that the pandemic is closer to being under control. But we know that there are still more and more questions rolling in. So tonight, we're checking in to see how it's going for all things coronavirus in our area. Talking about everything from vaccine priority groups to how long immunity lasts, other virus mutations, and the meaning of side effects. As we work to get your questions answered, we together, a coronavirus discussion. And thank you for joining us for our special tonight. I'm Molly Pat. For months now, we've been asking you for all of your questions about all things coronavirus. And week after week, the emails and phone calls roll in of what exactly you want to know. So tonight, I'm joined by Dr. Sony Matthew from Stormont Vale and Shawnee County's Infectious Disease Manager, Derek Furlog. So they're going to answer all of your questions tonight. We thank you both for being here tonight. And before we do get to the Q&A, though, I want to give a quick update on what we're seeing in Kansas right now. On the vaccine front, the state reports more than 600,000 doses have been distributed across Kansas, which means compared to last week, there are about 28,000 more vaccines in the state. More than 483,000 vaccines have been administered in Kansas right now, including both first and second doses. That's an additional 88,000 since last Monday. The state says in total, more than 339,000 people have been fully vaccinated. Now here in Shawnee County, only K through 12 staff, people 65 and older, and healthcare workers can get the shot right now. Right now, the county is giving about 4,700 shots this week to educators. 2,300 shots per week are going to people older than 65. And then school staff get their vaccines at two local hospitals. They can sign up through the district. People 65 and older have multiple places to sign up. They can get the vaccine at the health department or either hospital. They can also get them at local Dillon's or Walmart stores. And right now, county health officials are asking people to sign up at all of these locations so you get your best opportunity to get the vaccine. So with that, we want to get started with our questions. So Dr. Matthew, I'll start with you just to check in as another week goes by. How is vaccine rollout going? We know that with the winter storm definitely presented some challenges. That's right, Molly. Thanks for having me back on the program. Um, as of now, we have administered around 22,000 vaccination doses of COVID-19. The winter storm has posed some challenges in the delivery uh, of the vaccines, and it was reflected in our, our vaccine schedule last week where we were unable to fully deliver the vaccinations uh, because we had no, no availability or allocation. All right, and so this question comes from a viewer, Deanna, Deanna Williamson. She wants to know who is priority right now for getting the vaccine, Dr. Matthew. So right now, uh, as we had before, we're still using the vaccine for folks in phase one, which are healthcare workers. Um, and as you mentioned, we're also starting to um, allocate phase two individuals uh, for Stormont Vale. That includes uh, folks above the age of 65. Right now, we're currently giving it to folks above the age of 71, as well as K through 12 uh, teachers. And Derek Vicky wants to know where does Shawnee County stand in vaccinating teachers, healthcare workers, and highway patrol? Yeah, thanks, Molly. So, um, you know, as we've gone through uh, our phase two approach, again, as, as Dr. Matthew stated, we started with law enforcement and 65 and older. And then as more allocations kind of come into the county, that's allowed us to bridge out into other groups within the phase. Uh, we were able to include those uh, K through 12 staff members. And then uh, we were, you know, really excited to see the, the governor uh, come out with her order as well to kind of branch out into that K through 12 staff with some additional allocation too. So that really allows us to focus on the teachers and the staff that are part of K through 12, uh, provide for that 65 and older group, and then really look forward to what's in that phase 2B as we're terming it, which has some of the food service industry workers, uh, the grocery store workers, and, and high contact critical workers. So is that kind of how the priorities are going to work, you know, with 2A, 2B, 2C to kind of filter through everybody as we see, you know, the widespread go on until phase 5? Yeah, I think, you know, when we started with, with 2A, when we termed it, um, it was really to focus on that law enforcement 65 and older, and allotment was and still is fairly limited compared to the number of people that we have to provide for and, and that are interested, and that's very exciting. Um, but we've kind of been able to graduate people into phase 2A, and then eventually, hopefully, we'll have supply that kind of um, outranks the demand, and we can look further into that 2B, um, even phase 3. And again, I, I want to mention that all the subsequent phases are still included as well. So phase one is in phase two. Phase two, although we've expanded to K through 12, we're still providing 
for 65 and older through all of our various partners. Okay, good. So it just keeps going even if you miss that the first time. Correct. Now, Rebecca wants to know, what do elderly people need to do to get vaccinated? I'll have both of you answer this one, but Dr. Matthew, all of you go first. What do you recommend for the elderly to, you know, get there, get up there and get their shot? We know that there are technology problems and just a myriad of other things. So from a general perspective, I think it's important, and this is outside of whether you're not part of Stormont's Vale system in our electronic medical record, because that's how folks are being contacted at this time within our purview. Um, if you're outside of that, I would encourage you to contact your local county health department um, and find out through them where you should go and sign up for the vaccine. There are a number of areas to sign up for the vaccine. Signing up doesn't necessarily mean that you're uh, being put on a waiting list for the vaccine. It's to show uh, the county and other uh, entities that you are interested in getting the vaccine. Um, and then once you have an appointment, I think it's important that you go back to the other areas you may have signed up and let them know that you have an appointment to get the vaccine. And Derek, do you have anything to add for the elderly folks as well? Yeah, so we actually have a new vaccine uh, portion of our website. So sncous uh, slash HD, and then there's a, a vaccine banner on the website that you can click on, and we have our collaboration uh, information. So it includes all of the links to our partners within the collaboration. Um, it includes info on the population basis as well. We have our interest survey, which again is not scheduling you for a, uh, an appointment, but is getting you on the survey, which we've begin, uh, we have began to work through uh, in the order that we received it. And so I would encourage people to take all the avenues that they can. We have a couple pharmacies, Walmart and Dillon's, uh, Doug's Pharmacy in Rossville is getting some uh, allocation from the federal government. And they're all kind of working within their own systems to schedule. So I would encourage people to reach out to them as well. Uh, we also, if I could plug our 785-251-4949 line, people can call and one of our information specialists will actually complete the survey for you. I've done the survey for people. Um, I, I very gracious to Stormont Vale for uh, working through some of the issues with their, with their my chart and, uh, you know, being a team player on that, I'm, I'm just uh, excited to get people signed up. Yeah, in a lot of ways, that's a good thing. So that definitely good there. Now, Dr. Matthew Cheryl Starr wants to know, how many people does Stormont Vale have left to vaccinate that are 65 and older? So I'd have to do some math there, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that on the air right now. <laughs> uh, I will tell you, when we looked at the allocations, really it depends on the number of vaccines we receive. Our goal is to, to vaccinate everyone and anyone that we receive information from, from Shawnee County. I think that's the really important take home message here. Uh, the reason we started backwards, we started from ages 73, 74 and above, and then started working our way backwards. As long as we have the supply, we'll be able to um, issue vaccine and administer the vaccine appropriately. And then Derek, any insight on how many people countywide left to get vaccinated in that age group? Sure. So we vaccinated to date, as we understand it, from some of our reporting, most of our reporting entities, um, including about 16 of the 25 long term care facilities. We vaccinated approximately 17,000 plus individuals that are 65 and older. And just through our interest survey, some census data and uh, using uh, some of our community partners, we understand there to be about about 33 to 34,000 people um, in Shawnee County that are age 65 and older. And that's on that vaccine portion of our website too. It has those in tables for people to see. Awesome. That just shows you though how many people are to be getting vaccinated just in this one age group. Now, Dr. Matthew, we've heard from a couple of people, including Jane at Bicknell, who says that she was contacted through Sermont Vale through the MyChart app about getting a shot, but then was never able to actually register. So what should people do who are feeling that way and have gone through that same experience? Well, I would say if you're not able to get through through the MyChart app, I would say you should call our uh, hotline and then go from there to get more information about that. Um, in the unlikely event, you're not able to register through MyChart. And then Karen Larson is 65 or is older than 65 and has an underlying health condition. She says that she has registered with both hospitals and with the county website to get an appointment for a shot, but she's heard nothing. She also knows that people who have already gotten their or both of their shots. So she wants to know what is going on. How are people getting selected? How do people get appointments? Who decides who's going and who's getting scheduled? Derek, do you have any insight for her? Yeah, within our interest survey, we're currently scheduling people in the order that they uh, submitted their survey and that's 65 and older only and then the various partners are kind of scheduling different um, Stormont Vale has their their my chart system that they're working through which captures people in a variety of ways that are older than 65 um, St. Francis has a, um, a survey as well uh, um, and then some of the other pharmacies are working kind of on an appointment based schedule 
Um, I don't have too much insight on how they're scheduling, but would certainly appreciate the communication from them so we could relay that info. Uh, but we are working in the order that we received it on our survey. Again, 65 and older only. And then do you have any insight on how that's going for people who are 65 and older getting their shots at uh, Dillon's or Walmart? Are you having any communication with them? Uh, limited communication to this point, but what we have heard is things are, are going quickly. Uh, I know they're working through their allocations. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. um, it was in the hundreds, but they gave those within a one to two day time span. I, and I know Doug's Pharmacy in, in Rossville, they've been uh, great to communicate with. They've had some agreements from beforehand, uh, before all this started, to vaccinate some long-term care facilities, and they were able to finish those up as well. And they've also been working in 65 and older. So. And then Dr. Matthew, one viewer says that she keeps checking online at Dillon's and at Walmart and then also is calling the Stormont Vale waitlist number. She wants to know if there's any way that she can know when there's actually vaccine available so that she's not wasting her time checking all the time. That's a good question. Uh, you know, I think this is a challenging time. Again, it's supply versus demand. Um, the wait list for Stormont Vale is, is a very um, a plus or minus type system. It's based on the number of, of doses that are uh, ended up being extra for the day. So I wouldn't put a, a strong guarantee on the fact that you're going to be able to get vaccinated based on that. With Stormont, um, it's an appointment only system. We're open Monday through Friday and uh, we will call and, and schedule these appointments through my chart. So um, I think it's important to remember that. Um, and again, like I said before, it's it's good to go through various avenues um, to sign up for different uh, vaccinations at different sites. But if you do have an appointment scheduled, please do call back and let the other sites know that you've received an uh, appointment. Yes, definitely. So that those doses can be allocated to other people for sure. All right, we're going to take a quick break here. But when we come back, we're going to talk about where to get the vaccine, how long the shot gives you immunity for and proof of vaccination. We'll be right back. We Together, a coronavirus discussion sponsored by Stormont Vale Health. Frontliners, essential employees, heroes. We've been called many things during this pandemic, but the truth is we aren't your first line of defense. That title belongs to you, your neighbors, and your community. By wearing a mask, washing your hands, and social distancing, you can keep us safe. Care for others so we can care for you. Stormont Vale Health, empowering you together. COVID-19, will I get it? Will I survive? COVID is scary, but there's one place you should always feel safe. At Stormont Vale Health, our hospital and clinics are taking every precaution to make sure you can still receive your routine and elective health care quickly and safely. Our emergency department with a level two trauma center is still the best place for emergent care. COVID-19 is scary, but receiving your health care shouldn't be. KSNT News and the Jefferson Awards are honoring unsung heroes and communities all across Northeast Kansas. Every month we recognize deserving people who go beyond what is expected to help those in need. It takes everyone to make this work. I just started volunteering for stuff. If you know someone who is making a difference, help us shine a light on their service. Go to KSNT.com to nominate them today. The Jefferson Awards, sponsored by Azura Credit Union. People always ask us, how come you look so chipper in the morning? They must think we get here before the sun comes up. The truth is, we live here. Mom, not so close to the camera. I can see up your nose. Ryan, your hibiscus lemon water with a unicorn splash is here. Live with Kelly and Ryan. Weekday mornings at 11 on KSNT. Night, night, Ry Ry. Sweet dreams. Morning. Why is the studio such a mess? And welcome back to our coronavirus special discussion tonight. We want to get to our next question, and it comes from Gina Sheritz. So she says that she has tried scheduling online for the Dillon's and Walmart vaccine programs. Do either of you know how the federal distribution process is going locally? Dr. Matthew, I'll have you start. Uh, well, I'm going to defer that one to Derek, <laughs> um, <laughs> given that it's a distribution question uh, yeah. and answer. I was going to defer that back to you, actually, <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, to be honest, we're not very involved in the federal allocation. Uh, we do ask for communication from those pharmacies that are receiving it. There, there were other avenues, too, when this all began. Uh, the long-term care facilities were vaccinated through a federal partnership as well with CVS and Walgreens, and 
we weren't too involved in that either, to be honest. So we're trying to gather info from those pharmacies, especially numbers, to really understand who is and who isn't getting it in terms of who's consenting to the vaccine so we can you know, understand some of the numbers here. But uh, to be honest, we're just, we're just not involved. Okay, and now let's talk about alternate places to get the vaccine. Derek Ron P says that he is wheelchair bound and has a lung condition that doesn't allow him to go outside. Plus, with the weather, his wheelchair might not work in the ice or snow. So in some places, shots are being delivered to people's homes. In other states, I think he means. So he's asking, will we ever be able to see them bringing vaccines to us? And what does the vaccine process look like for people who are homebound? Yeah, thanks, Ron. This is a really, really important barrier that we've been talking about, to be honest, for the last week or so, of kind of identifying these, these uh, people, not only that are homebound and that might not be able to get to a vaccination clinic, but also people that just don't have access to transportation um, or, or, or may not be able to, to get to one of these clinics either. And so we're working on this with the team now. We're discussing different ways. You know, we've talked about partnerships through this. So there's partnerships through some different entities that, you know, work in the, the home care industry that may be beneficial. Uh, and then we're trying to identify all the, the, the gaps and, and bridge those gaps, as it states in the health department mission, uh, to, to cover some of you. So we're, we're working on it. We're having these discussions daily. We just want to find the best way to provide for those people that are homebound. And on that same tune, Dr. Matthew, Deb Conrad says, with vaccine delivery delays last week and more vaccine due in this week, is there any possibility of the Stormont Vale Vaccine Clinic scheduling appointments over the weekend? So just adding another option in here. So right now, as I said, our vaccine clinic is operating between Monday through Friday and it's by appointment only. We are looking into other modalities for future um, possible weekends. Um, it's not there at this time though. Okay, and Derek, Trisha Klein wants to know how long does the COVID shot last for? So I think she means how long does the shot give you immunity for? Yeah, um, as of this moment, as I understand it from guidance from the CDC and some literature that we've got from the state, you are immune for 90 days from the time you're fully vaccinated. Now, what does fully vaccinated mean? That is 14 days, stick with me here, 14 <laughs> days after your last dose in the series. Now there's two different, uh, doses that you would think about. You have the two doses that come with Moderna and Pfizer. That's what's being offered now. There is the potential down the road for a one dose shot and it would still be 14 days from that last shot there too. So I know that's not very clear. Uh, we'll try to get something out there maybe on our website and uh, put it social media, things like that to help people understand. Okay, and so with that, Dr. Matthew, Jan then wants to know how important is it to wait 90 days to receive the vaccine after recovering from COVID-19? So the recovery from COVID-19, obviously we're talking about a state where you're out of isolation and been cleared to, to be a part of the general public. Um, what we have to remember is there is a, a natural immunity that you receive from, from infection. Um, so there is a 90 day window uh, period where you can defer to take the vaccine at a later date. However, if you're out of isolation and you're cleared to be around uh, in general public, you can take the vaccine sooner. So you don't have to uh, wait for the whole 90 day. Lots of lots of numbers, lots of days, lots of all the things. Now, Stephen Neal wants to know if a vaccine card will be needed for travel. Dr. Matthew, do you have any insight on this? And also, it kind of helps you keep track of when you got your vaccine, when your next appointment is, and keep all those dates together. Absolutely. So just to review, so at Stormont Vale, when we offer the vaccine, administer the vaccine, we're actually storing that information into an electronic medical record. Uh, we report it to the, the state website, as well as give an information sheet uh, to the patient that's uh, receiving the vaccine. So uh, we do administer that. Uh, now in terms of whether that's gonna be needed for travel, at this time within for domestic travel within the US, it's not required. Um, and I say at this time, at some point we may see this being a requirement for international travel um, down the line. It's not there right now for international or domestic travel, but stay tuned for that. And then Derek Sherry, I wants to know if Shawnee County is issuing those vaccine cards as well. Um, how important is that for somebody to, you know, keep in their wallet and just really hold on to? It is important to be honest. So the vaccine cards, a little square CDC cards, we get those shipped to us in the supplies that come with the actual vaccine. So they're allocated to us just like the vaccine. We get them uh, virtually in the same amount to my understanding. So we, ha we have had people reach out that were vaccinated at other sites for a card. Unfortunately, we're not able to provide those cards for people that are not vaccinated by the Shawnee County Health Department. And then it is important to keep your card. 
uh, not only for your date that's listed, but also when you come back, it's a proof of, of receiving your first dose. Now we have other ways to check that, and it is reportable to the state, much like Dr. Matthew mentioned, but uh, it is, it, it's good for you to keep, just like any other vaccine record. I would encourage people to really keep track of this as well. Yeah, not just for a quick selfie, but also for your personal <laughs> record as well. All right, we're going to take another quick break here, but we'll be right back talking about side effects, the flu, and vaccines in smaller communities. We'll be right back. We Together, a coronavirus discussion sponsored by Stormont Vale Health. Stormont Vale Health, Harlan Healthy Neighborhood, and the Shawnee County Health Department need your input. As part of the Community Health Needs Assessment for the residents of Shawnee County, an online survey is available for you to provide feedback about the health needs affecting you and your family. The survey takes less than 10 minutes to complete. All responses are confidential. Help us meet the needs of those in our community. Stormont Vale Health, Heartland Healthy Neighborhood y el Departamento de Salud de Shawnee County necesitan su ayuda. Estamos ofreciendo una encuesta digital que nos ayudará a entender cuáles son las necesidades de salud suyas y de su familia. Esto es parte de un asesoramiento de necesidades médicas y de salud para los residentes del condado de Shawnee. La encuesta toma menos de 10 minutos y todas las respuestas son confidenciales. Ayúdenos a cuidar de las necesidades de salud de todos en la comunidad. Your day is complicated enough. Keeping track of the latest local news, weather, and sports shouldn't be. Fortunately, you can get it all in one place. KSNT.com. At the ball game, the office, or at home. No matter where life takes you, stay connected with the latest local news, weather, and sports. When you want it. At KSNT.com. Anytime, any place, any device. One address. KSNT.com. Stick it! Tonight, a special episode of The Wall as Olympic champion Apollo Ono competes for Team USA. Helping these athletes achieve their dreams. Will he bring home the gold again? <laughs> the Wall, tonight on NBC. Blake knows how to win the voice. I'm running out of places to put voice trophies. <laughs> but there's one thing he knows even better. This is the triple threat mullet. Party in the back, shave size, and the rare widow's peak. The Voice <laughs> premieres March 1st on NBC. And we're back for our final few minutes in tonight's coronavirus special discussion. So, Dr. Matthew, this next question comes from Dorothy Smith. She wants to know if you have side effects from the shot, does that mean your body is making antibodies? And then if you don't have side effects from the shot, does that mean that your body isn't making antibodies? It's a great question. So, as we know, these mRNA vaccines are reactogenic. So, what does that mean? Well, these create vaccine-induced antibodies in our system to fight off uh, COVID-19 if it sees it later on down the line. So it's normal for us to develop a certain set of adverse reactions, or excuse me, side effects from the vaccine, such as pain at the site of injection, swelling, redness. Some people also develop a headache, fever, uh, fatigue, the tiredness that is. Um, now, coming to the question of, well, if I have these side effects, what does that mean? Well, it means your body is doing the right thing. It's, it's creating uh, an immune response. Now, we know that folks that are in a certain age groups have a stronger immune response than others. For a lot of us that are chronologically challenged, if you're above the age of 60 or 65, you may not have the same level of immune response that someone younger does. Um, that doesn't mean the vaccine's not working. Um, it just means that it, your immune response is not the same as someone who's a little bit younger than you. Okay, so if you don't have side effects, it's, it's still working, you're good to go. You are, and okay. typically the side effects are, happen after the second dose and not okay. after the first dose. Okay, so a little be prepared for, for that one too. Now Derek from our lease says, uh, she's from Emporia, and she says that I've heard they recommend not taking any pain relievers before getting the vaccine since it can impair your immunity. So first I want you to talk about that, if that's true, and then Marlise goes on to say, however, I have arthritis and take ibuprofen on a regular basis to help with the pain. I take two regular ibuprofen four times a day. If I don't take a dose within four to six hours, of her ibuprofen before getting the vaccine, is that enough? Also, what about aspirin? Does it have a difference? Well, Marlies, I am uh, actually not a physician, so I would have <laughs> to defer to, to Dr. Matthew to take this one. Dr. Matthew, any advice for her? Sure. So, you know, although we don't like to give specific advice for, for individuals with, with individual uh, situations, mm -hmm. I just like to explain overall, like I said before, it is a reactogenic 
um, vaccine, so you're going to see some level of response from your body. Um, now, we don't recommend folks normally to pre-medicate before taking the vaccine um, because we don't want to blunt that immune response. That being said, if you're on a normal dose of medication, of anti-inflammatory medication, um, I would not discontinue your doses, but to be more specific, you should probably consult your doctor to find out. Um, but in that case, I would say that normally, for most folks, you would just continue your regular medications. And then also, can people take, you know, the ibuprofen, the pain relievers, right after they get the shot as well, though? Because, you know, that swelling or um, sore arm or whatnot. Right. So if it becomes uncomfortable to, to a point where you feel like you need to take some medication, that's okay. Um, like I said before, we don't want to blunt the reaction by pre-medicating before taking the vaccine, but taking it afterwards, it's, it's fine. Okay. And Dr. Matthew, Stephen Neal wants to know why we're not talking about the flu. Usually that's all we're talking this time of year. That's a, that's a great question. And so if you think about it, all the levels of mitigation measures we're using, all the layers, you know, social distancing, wearing a mask, avoiding crowds. Um, these are all things that affect not only COVID-19, but it affected the flu. Um, flu has come down in, in record numbers to almost non-existent at this point because of all these, uh, almost a side effect of us protecting ourselves against COVID-19. Do you think that if we carry on these measures in years to come, that would also, you know, mitigate the flu a little bit from happening as much as it has in the past? There are chances of that, um, although I wouldn't, you know, it's hard to be certain because, again, viruses do mutate, mm -hmm. so it can always be there in the background at a lower level than we're normally used to. Yeah, and Derek, I'll have you answer Stephen's other question. He asks, with viruses constantly mutating and evolving, will this be an ongoing problem like the flu? So will COVID-19 become an ongoing problem with the different mutations? Well, it's it's certainly possible. Um, I think the data that we have now for the vaccine is promising, showing that it will protect against the variants. Uh, but whether variants exist or not, you know, the mitigation strategies remain the same. I mean, that's what I tell people every day. If we had a variant here in Shawnee County, and I'll be clear, to my knowledge, we haven't identified one yet. But if and when we do, the, the, mitiga the mitigation strategies remain the same. We still practice that social distancing. Mask wearing is very, very important. Um, and, and keeping in mind all the other various preventative measures that we can take to, to stop the spread. And are you concerned about a surge of cases due to the spread of the UK variant? Do you think that if it goes back to, you know, will that make us go back to where we were almost a year ago from now? Well, I think if we, if we keep doing what we're doing, our trends are going in the right direction. Um, I see people doing the right things daily. I see some people not doing the right things daily. And so I just kind of urge that personal risk assessment before going out or choosing to partake in an, an activity, uh, keeping um, a log of maybe who you've been around. It really helps us when we, when we contact trace. Um, I'd be lying if I said I'm not concerned about a surge eventually. Typically, we see people kind of relax when our numbers get to a certain level. It's very exciting to, to have this improvement, but it's also very important to keep doing what we're doing to head in the right direction. Yeah, and Dr. Matthew, one viewer wants to know, where are we with people in smaller towns getting vaccines as well? Well, so this is a question that I don't know if I'm equipped to answer because I'm, I could talk about Stormont Vale and our, our population here. Um, but uh, I would say that, again, you need to contact your local county health department um, and get information of when and where you'll be eligible to take the vaccine. And Derek, I think a lot of people, you know, they're, they're worried that they're not knowing when exactly to go get their vaccine or they're, they're taking all the right steps to be on that list and make an appointment. What advice would you have for them who are just confused and just really want, okay, I need to do step A, step B, and step C to go and get my vaccine and be ready to go so we can get back to normal? Yeah, I'll pitch our vaccine website again. It kind of has all that helpful information and helpful links on there. And then for those that maybe don't have access, friends and family, if you know of any anybody in your you know friend group or your family circle that doesn't have access to that, use that website for information uh, gathering as well. I would say to people, you know, if they've done our survey, they've they've talked to Stormont Vale, they've done St. Francis's survey, they've talked to Grace Med and the VA, they've called the pharmacies every morning at 8 a.m. like many people are doing, you're doing your part and you're being a really, really strong advocate, not only for yourself, but for the community. Yeah, and Dr. Matthew, for my final question tonight, in one sentence, what is something that you want people to take away tonight? Well, I think the takeaway message is, is very important. When you're eligible, take the vaccine. And remember, taking the vaccine is only one of the layers. You still have to continue the other protective la layers, that is wearing a mask, social distancing, avoiding crowds, 
and also, you know, washing your hands. Yeah, it's all the things. All right, thank you both so much for taking the time to answer all of our questions tonight. We really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We also appreciate you sending in all of your questions week after week. So keep sending them to coronavirus at KSNT.com and be sure to join us next Monday and all the Mondays after that. Have a good night. Frontliners, essential employees, heroes. We've been called many things during this pandemic, but the truth is we aren't your first line of defense. That title belongs to you, your neighbors, and your community. By wearing a mask, washing your hands, and social distancing, you can keep us safe. Care for others so we can care for you. Stormont Vale Health, empowering you together. COVID-19. Will I get it? Will I survive? COVID is scary, but there's one place you should always feel safe. At Stormont Vale Health, our hospital and clinics are taking every precaution to make sure you can still receive your routine and elective health care quickly and safely. Our emergency department with a level two trauma center is still the best place for emergent care. COVID-19 is scary, but receiving your health care shouldn't be.